Hello there. Nice to have you here on Zim Safety Shoes. Today we are talking about testing safety shoes. Do keep watching. Protective footwear are designed to do just that, keep your feet safe. So, we can imagine why you would want to know just how durable these pieces of personal protective equipment are. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA, regulates all the work environments in America. The OSHA is tasked with ensuring employee safety in the workplace. And to get this done, the OSHA sets and enforces a set of standards that everyone must comply with. The standards of the OSHA encompass all aspects of the workplace, not excluding personal protective equipment or PPE, for short. Personal protective equipment is imperative for people who work in environments where they are liable to occupational hazards that are beyond the control of their employers. When it comes to PPE, protective footwear ranks high on the list and for good reason. Safety footwear is required to protect your feet from a minimum of four hazardous situations such as punctures from sharp objects, compression, impact, and chemical products. However, this list is not exhaustive because there are also special hazards such as mechanical hazards, electrical hazards, and cuts from chainsaws. As mechanical hazards, electrical hazards, and cuts from chainsaws. So, what protective footwear passes OSHA's test, and what does it take to pass this test? Let's find out. Safety Shoe Tests To ensure that protective footwear used by workers meets safety standards, these safety footwears undergo several stages of testing which we will be discussing at length. Some of these tests include Toe cap tests Metatarsal protection tests Outsole tests Thermal and chemical tests Electrical resistance tests Insulation regulation tests Water resistance tests energy absorption tests conductivity tests and finally static dissipation tests toe cap test one of the most fundamental forms of protection that safety footwears were designed to give is the protection of the toes this is because the toes are very subject to crushing injuries traditional toe caps are made of steel however things have changed and now they can be made of composite materials or high-grade plastic like thermoplastic polyurethane tpu Keep in mind that in the construction business, steel toe boots are the go-to safety footwear. To carry out toe cap tests, the protective toe caps are completely removed from the protective footwear. This is done by having the width behind the protective toe caps back edge cut across. This leaves a 3 cm gap away from the toe cap on the outsole of the protective footwear. After this is done, a modeling clay cylinder is placed directly under the toe cap's point of pressure, while the toe cap is positioned at the base of the test equipment. This is done in a fashion that makes the central point of the test to be done around the highest point of the toe cap. The toe cap comprises of two tests which are The impact resistance test The purpose of an impact resistance test is to determine the capacity of the protective footwear to offer protection around the toe area against falling objects. This test involves having a sudden blow landed in the toe cap. This is done by having an object with specified energy impacted on the toe cap. This energy is measured in joules. The mass of the striking object generally used is 20 kilograms while a steel wedge is used as the nose of the impactor to deliver total impact energy of 200 joules. Also, the atmospheric condition of the impact resistance test, the amount of weight, the velocity of the drop, the distance of the weight dropped, and the impact of the energy delivered is identified by each standard. After this is done, the amount of clearance left inside the toe cap after the impact is determined. Compression resistance test. A compression resistance test is used to ascertain the capacity of the protective footwear to protect the toe area of its wearer's foot against heavy rolling objects. This test is done a little differently from the impact resistance test. To carry out a compression test, an increasingly heavy load is applied on the toe cap using two parallel steel plates until it reaches a compressive force of about 15,000 newtons. When this is completed, the amount of clearance left inside the toe cap after the compression is determined. After the toe cap test is completed, the modeling clay is removed and its minimum height is measured. This is used to ascertain whether or not the toe cap meets the requirement set for the class or grade standard. Metatarsal protection test. A metatarsal protection test is used to gauge the amount of protection that safety shoes can provide to the upper part of the feet metatarsal bones and the toes. 
Safety shoes that are designed with metatarsal protection are made to ensure that little to no injuries are sustained in cases where the metatarsal region and the toes are affected. To carry out a metatarsal protection test, a fitted wax form is placed into the safety shoes. After this, a weight is released onto the metatarsal region of the footwear. This mirrors an impact resistance test. When this is done, the length of the wax formed after the impact is recorded. Outsole test The main purpose of this is to test the outsoles of safety shoes for penetration and slip resistance. Slip resistance testing is regarded as one of the most important parts of testing safety footwear. To prevent litigations from workers and consumers who are becoming increasingly aware of their rights, safety footwear manufacturers have begun to pay more attention to slip resistance shoes. This is done by measuring the coefficient of friction between the different types of flooring and the sole of their safety footwear. The frictional properties of the soles can be measured by sliding the material of the outsole over other surfaces. The slip test is used to ascertain the anti-slip properties of the safety footwear being tested. Penetration resistance testing, on the other hand, is an extra layer of protection given to safety shoes. Penetration resistance testing is done by inserting an object through the bottom of the shoe. This is to ensure that its wearer is protected from sharp objects that may penetrate the outsole of the shoe and cause injury. This is most useful in the construction industry where loose nails and screws are very likely to lay around. These can be very hazardous for workers. Penetration resistance tests are carried out with the use of non-metallic or steel inserts. The upper of the safety shoe is removed and the outsole is put to the test. A total of four regions of the outsole are tested, the heel area, the inside forepart, the outside forepart, and the center area. These tests are repeated across various sizes of safety shoes. To test the outsole, a test nail with a blunt tip is forced through it with building pressure until 1100 newtons of force is achieved, in the case of non-metallic inserts. If metallic inserts are used, this force is exceeded. Thermal and chemical tests If the toe caps are metallic, thermal and chemical tests are carried out on them to measure their resistance to corrosion. These tests are carried out by subjecting the toe caps and inserts under the action of sodium chloride. However, if the toe caps and inserts are non-metallic, then the impact resistance test will have to be measured after exposure to chemical and thermal aging treatments. Electrical resistance tests. This type of test is conducted on safety shoes that were designed to serve as a backup line of protection. It's used in cases where workers accidentally come in contact with live electrical components or energized conductors while working under dry conditions. Therefore, they are designed to minimize the tendency of an electric shock to happen to a worker. However, it must be mentioned that the level of protection provided will be depleted in wet conditions. To carry out an electrical resistance test, the safety shoes are placed on a large electrode, mostly in the form of a metal mesh. After this, small metal spheres are piled into the shoes and another electrode is put within the metal spheres. A high voltage of a predefined scale is passed through the metal mesh electrode to the shoe for a specific amount of time. The flow or leakage of current through the safety shoes during that time frame is then used to measure its electrical resistance. Insulation against heat and cold tests. While testing safety shoes against heat, they are placed in a sand bath at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. After this, the variation of the temperature inside the safety shoes is determined. When it comes to testing insulation of safety shoes against cold, these shoes are placed in a refrigerator at about minus 17 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes before having the variation of the temperature inside the shoes determined. Water resistance tests. These tests are conducted to determine the resistance of safety shoes to water. To carry out a water resistance test, the safety shoes are placed securely in a flexion machine containing water. Then, it is slowly submerged until it reaches a predefined height. This height is usually about the bond of the upper outsole. The safety shoes are then flexed at a regular speed during which the penetration of water into the safety shoes is reviewed at different intervals. Energy absorption tests. An energy absorption test is carried out to ascertain the amount of energy that can be absorbed by the heel area of a safety shoe. Using a dynamometer, this is measured by seeing if it can hold as much as 5000 newtons of force when applied on the rear part of a shoe. Conductivity tests. Conductive safety shoes are designed to discharge electricity from the body of their wearers through the shoes and into grounded floors. 
For this to happen, the floors need to be grounded to ensure that charges can be properly dissipated. This ensures that there is minimal static electricity, and by extension, very little probability of volatile explosives or chemicals being ignited in the workplace. To carry out a conductivity test, the safety shoes are placed on a base electrode plate. They can be tested dry or in water, depending on the standard being followed. After this is done, small metal spheres are piled into the shoes and another electrode is placed within the metal sphere. A specific voltage is applied for some time and the electrical resistance is then measured. Static Dissipation Tests Safety shoes designed with static dissipation qualities are constructed to minimize the amount of static electricity by having these charges conducted from the body to the ground. These kinds of footwear provide limited protection to wearers against accidental contact with live electrical elements. Therefore, it is recommended that they should not be worn around electrical types of equipment that are highly charged. Static dissipating safety shoes are expected to be worn in clean environments and be used in conjunction with static dissipating flooring. There are variations to static dissipation tests and they depend on the standard they are being tested for. Metal spheres or human subjects can be used when carrying out these tests. They are placed on either a dry or wet electrode plate. Then, a specific voltage is applied for some time and the electrical resistance is then measured. Conclusion The lengths taken to ensure that safety shoes are indeed safe for workers to use in their respective environments are quite extensive, as you can see. This is why it is important to double-check when purchasing safety shoes, to ensure that they are indeed certified to have met these standards because that means that you have nothing to worry about. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details and visit our site, www.zimsafetyshoes.com for more awesome safety shoe content like this.